Rob Kerr and I started in 2007 and did, did a, a couple of years of um, not terribly effective foresight academic work. Um, but what I was always looking for was what is it that seems unsatisfactory and what might be the ways of changing it. And one of those things was, um, as you mentioned, the, this idea that it's money and how much we've got or who we can get it from or who's giving us the best rate or something like that. Whereas really, if you didn't have any, um, any things and you could really just sit down and look at this beautiful green space, which I think you shone briefly before, because the, the thing about this is that it is functional, and it's, but it has its own presence. When I do weeding, you know, like I can see all the different grasses and I know what their root systems are like, what they're going to do later on, and which are the worst seeds to have to worry about for later on. So we completely ignore all those systems that exist at the moment, and I just wonder, well, I could actually be quite happy looking after a patch of space and understanding and working with it. I don't have to worry about, you know, how much television I've got or how much money I'm getting or whether the financial crisis is going to continue or not. And as with the um, parts of The Age of Stupid, the film, the showing that the African scenes where all of the wealth is being stripped, you know, and we probably did it to a fair degree in Australia as well and we may be doing it to ourselves. And I think a lot of it's to do with, well, we need to take small steps very slowly because every time we have this wonderful idea and a, a dive into the, this will fix everything, we haven't given enough consideration to end up with somewhere that we'd really like to be. If we're okay now, everybody who's okay should be saying, let's plateau here and get everyone else up there first. And I guess that's a, an individual moral space. So. I'd love to know how we can do that. And I'm, so I'd love, Peter's thing about education in schools could have been good. How do we do moral, how do we teach morals? How do we teach um, ethical thinking? How do we teach inclusive thinking or consequential thinking? And how do we, how do, we do that for kids such that they actually want to and, and are proud to look after other people rather than proud to have the plastic toy? So that'll do for the moment, but I'll go back to my gardening. Can I just ask, have you heard of Steiner schools at all? I have heard of Steiner schools. Um, Thoughts on them? Uh, because what I'm really yeah. hearing is that we need a revolution in how we educate the young. We need them to be aware that they're part of a biological system and that they should have intrinsic ethical values and they should be proud to stand up for them because our current society is apathetic towards putting your hand up high and saying, hey, maybe we should do this better. That's from right. What I find. Yeah, I mean, I my understanding of Steiner schools is that they give you a lot more freedom to actually f figure things out for yourself instead of train you to understand what it is that they want you to know. Yeah, that's because it, yeah. it's useful for somebody else in the system, and I, I certainly believe that the current education system does that. You know, we ne we don't talk about spirituality or whatever, even though it's part of life. It's not religion. We're still secular if we talk about spirituality, but we don't talk about these things that are sort of like the preserve of high priests in this case or that the high priests of finance we don't get taught finance at school mm. you know we might learn a little about the economic system but we don't learn things that are about people um, discovering things themselves and actually making decisions themselves I think so is it fair to say people need to learn how to learn and then take responsibility for teaching themselves I think they need to learn that they are responsible for everything that they do and everything they participate in to some degree. And if they know that, they will then need to learn how to understand the consequences and they will want to learn because they know that there is going to be somebody coming later on and saying, you know, that decision wasn't very good or this is the consequence, you know, are you really happy with it? If we can ask people to recognise that they're part of that causal chain, they'll start to be interested in why it's happening that way or what the consequences is. Do I have to give it up? Do I have to actually do it differently? Do we have to help them in a third way to, to sort of, we can do it the same way, I can get what I want, but we can also specifically help the other end. It's, it's that all-inclusive look and it's, um, it's really not what we sort of get taught or trained to do. You know? Now that these days, 
you've got to have a laptop, otherwise you're not in advanced school. <laughs> it's not really <laughs> inspiring. But I think I'd like to see morality and ethics taught um, almost um, the Jeffrey Robertson style. Just take people through, um, what do you call them, hypotheticals. Um, just put people in different roles and say, you're this today, you're that today, and let's run something for an hour. Then we'll do it again, and after a week or two, we'll talk about did people act differently, and what was driving you, and you know, would you want to do that forever, and that sort of thing. So.